Okay, um, I'm going to read off the list of who's present. Um, so according from the Common Council, we have Councilman O'Brien, Awusu Anani, Alfredo Ballerin, Joe Igo, Kathy Fahey, Council President Ellis, Majority Leader Farrell, Jack Flynn, Joyce Love, President Pro Tem Kelly Kimbrell, uh, Councilman Tom Hoey, and entering right now is um, Councilman Derek Johnson. Okay, uh, good. And then I'm not familiar with everybody from the administration portion, so, but we do have Frank Zioli, Bill Trudeau, uh, Commissioner Jones, and that's all I recognize off the top of off from what I can see. Commissioner Jones here too. Oh, perfect. All right, so Jack and Mike, you're able to proceed. Okay, so if we could proceed with the two resolutions dealing with street names first, and that's uh, Bill Trudeau's uh, area of expertise, and they are. Uh, Resolution number 51-6220-R. Right, that's honoring Ruby Hughes. And the other is resolution uh, number 57-6220-R, honoring Hank Wallace White. Actually, I guess maybe we let the two sponsors speak first on that to kind of remind us the significance of these two individuals. And then we would have Bill Trudeau speak about um, whether there are any issues from his point of view of doing street uh, renamings for them. So uh, Derek uh, is the sponsor of the one for Ruby Hughes. So maybe he could just tell us a little bit about Ruby Hughes. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mike? Uh, I can, yeah. Uh, I can, yeah. So growing up in the South End, um, Miss Hughes, Miss Ruby Hughes, was a name that was familiar with uh, community work. Um, she spent many of the year working out at Trinity and um, developed many programs. So um, I know many of the people who have benefited from her um, effort and for her uh, countless hours that she put in down in Trinity. And I believe the um, current person who uh, sits in, in, in um, the position she once held is handpicked by her. So it's an honor to be part of a um, group that is recognizing the work that um, Ms. Hughes did for our community. Um, it's an honor to continue on her um, work that um, she started. and. Um, I look forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Joyce, and, can you uh, tell Joyce, us? Can you tell us about, uh, about uh, William Hank Wallace? Hey, uh, Mike, that's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess <laughs> Kelly. It's Kelly. I'm sorry, Kelly. Could you? Yes, tell us? Uh, oh, but okay. actually, Joyce and, and uh, DJ could probably tell you more about Mr. Wallace than, than I, because I wasn't born and raised here. But uh, Mr. Wallace, he ran the Arbor Hill softball field. He, a lot of firsts. Uh, first African American at West Virginia State College in '59. Uh, he's director of the Collier Playground, located on Second Street here in Albany. Uh, back during that time, uh, in '61, he became the co-founder of Arbor Hill Softball League. Uh, and founded uh, the Sons of Arbor Hill uh, in, in 1966. Um, there, I mean, there are a lot more folks that can speak more eloquently and more in depth about Mr. Wallace, but he seems to have had a great impact on the community uh, through his his uh, his actions. So, um, the idea is to rename Living, excuse me, Lark Street between Livingston and. Uh, Manning Boulevard after him. The, the, the area that runs along the softball field, it's, it's th three intersections uh, that we'd be looking for, uh, for, si for signs on. Uh, and that's uh, about it. I mean, it, it, and again, there's more. Uh, assistant Principal Philip Livingston uh, Junior High School. Uh, there's, the list goes on and on for uh, his accomplishments and his, his uh, 
contributions to the community. And, and if I could add about Mr. Wallace, <clears throat> yeah, Mike, yep. if, if I could, if I could I'm trying to get my Mr. audio Wallace. back here. You're good, Derek. We hear you, Mike. Okay. Okay. So uh, if I could add about Mr. Uh, Wallace, Mr. Wallace is uh, legendary in my life on uh, many levels. You know, as they said, he was the first African-American administrator. Um, you know, just as an athlete, you know, I'm still learning things uh, about the things that he accomplished in life. And I just say, um, if you know, just in the current state that we are in, that you can best believe that if Mr. Wallace was alive, he would have been able to um, calm things down real quick um, in Albany. And, and that's what I'll say about Hank Wallace. He had that type of effect on our community that, um, you know, he knew everybody. Uh, does anyone else want to speak to the memory of uh, both of these people? Yes, Mike, I do. Um, okay. I didn't see it in the resolution, but I think we should, I believe Ruby Hughes was a county legislator as well. Oh. At one time, I think she was. You know, I knew Miss Hughes when I started my, my, my first summer job. I worked for Miss Hughes down at Trinity you know, the summer youth program, uh, I worked under her and she was my first boss, so to speak. And from that day forward, I always remembered her. Um, Ms. Hughes was, as I look at it when I was a kid, she was tough, but she was fair. Okay. And those are the things in, in communities that you look for. People who are going to keep you on a straight and narrow, tell you what you don't want to hear, but what's good for you. So I always remember her for, the, for that. And, you know, when I became a council member, in the third ward, uh, she was one of my first supporters. Uh, she was at the time she was the president of the neighborhood so um, Sheridan Hollow Sheridan Neighborhood Hollow. Association. Yeah, at that time, um, so she was. I remember her as just uh, tough, fair, and, and, and was a staunch, staunch advocate, especially in her later years about her neighborhood and the revitalization that needed to take place especially in Sheridan Hollow. She was, she was one of the uh, movers and shakers behind my, um, when I was a council member behind my Van and Bacon's buildings ordinances because she saw how the neighborhood could grow. And so the things you see in Sheridan Hollow now is part of her vision. So, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Mr. Wallace, you know, comes back as a kid. You know, our family been at that softball field since an inception. When, Mr. when the governor, when, uh, when Corning built that complex up there, and I just want to give the history of the complex. The complex was built during the race riots in Albany. Yes, we had race riots in Albany. And uh, the black community came together and Mayor Corning at that time said, okay, I will build you things in your neighborhood so your neighborhood could run those things. And so when people ask, why do people in Arbor Hill think the, the, the new courts, as we call them, and the Arb Hill Softball League and that the feel of why do they think it's theirs? Because they knew at the time the administration who built the put those things in place, it was for the community. And the community chose who those people would be that would run it. That's why Mr. Wallace did it for so many, for 30 some odd years. After that, uh, Warren Mackey did it for a year and then I did it for the next 10 years. Uh, and then after that, now Decky Lawson's doing it. So it's always been, in that in that arena, community based, uh, and, and and so it, it, we don't look at it just as a city park. We look at it as uh, the mayor Corning investing in that neighborhood, recreational programming that would go on in the summertime because we knew uh, back then the more recreational program you had, the more things people were doing, the less the less issues we had to worry about. So, um, I, you know, I'm pleased to support Mr. Wallace way. Uh, because not just because of sports, but because what he what he meant for education. And I'm pretty sure kids who went to public schools who went under him knew what Mr. Wallace was about when it came to education and what he stood for. Uh, he was another a man who was tough, but he was fair. And you knew where he stood and he did everything possible to help young people uh, figure out how they wanted to go, where they wanted to go and, and really encouraged it. So for me, uh, Seeing these two 
uh, resolutions. It, 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 it brings happiness to my heart because I knew what role they, they've played in my life and the thousands of other kids uh, that they played in their life who were born and raised in the city. Okay, so I would ask uh, Derek and uh, Kelly if they would want to add to their resolutions based on some of the additional history which you just gave to us. Uh, hello? Certainly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so could you coordinate that um, with Corey and um, you know, that could be added uh, on time for the adoption of both resolutions. Okay, sounds like a plan. Okay. And uh, it, Bill, Bill Trudeau? Yes, Mike. Yeah, hi. Um, maybe you could just, I, I know uh, uh, several months ago we adopted this procedure where whenever there was to be an honorary street name, uh, renaming, we would run it by, by you because uh, you're the one who actually is responsible for uh, getting the signs and right. keeping track of streets. And, uh, yep. So I'd just like your thoughts about the new process uh, which we have and, um, and then in particular these two uh, honorary street renamings. As far as the honorary street renamings, um, we're on board uh, with, with both, absolutely, you know, great people that sh should have their uh, their names uh, placed underneath the street name. Um, I do ask if we could consider um, just for consistency um, of the namings that we've had. Um, we typically use the uh, way at the end. I'm looking at the request and they're all way. So the um, Ruby A. Hughes place, could that be changed to Ruby A. Hughes way? Um, just for consistency. Yeah. Say, Derek, do, do you have any problem with changing place to way? That's Derek's. M not, not at all. Um, okay. Derek's, yeah. Okay. And I think the idea behind that was because it was Trinity Place that we were trying oh, to stay consistent. Yeah. That's how it ended up that way. <coughs> oh, yes. Uh, Bill, do you want to say anything else? Um, it is, uh, I think, as Kelly pointed out, there's three intersections on Lark Street. Uh, we can have those uh, set up without a problem. Um, it does tie into Colony Street, which is Sons of Arbor Hill Way. Uh, so that would be a good tie for, for, uh, Mr. Wallace, um, down on uh, Trinity, uh, it's two intersections, and we could get uh, those set up without a problem. Um, we would ask that if you could keep in touch with us for uh, dates for dedication so that we could make sure that the mayor is available um, and we have the signs fabricated and installed uh, whenever you folks are ready for dedication for both. Okay. Um, any uh, uh, committee members have thoughts that they want to add uh, at this time? Otherwise, I'll ask for... Uh, yes, oh, I got a question. Okay. I have a question. I had put in for the Millers last year, and I haven't heard anything you're, back you're as of yet. You're also set, Joyce. I didn't know that was part of the agenda, but absolutely no problem. No, it's not yeah. part of the agenda. Understood. Just, no problem. When, when he asked you that, anybody else had to say? I apologize. I do have that on the list as well. Kelly mentioned that to me the other day. Okay. And uh, that is Livingston Avenue between um, Tenbrook and North Pearl. And again, we just need a date as to when that wants to be dedicated. Um, and we can get that rolling as well. And that was under the old, that was under the old uh, process. So, um, Kelly, could could you uh, uh, or uh, Jr. 
Uh, has that resolution actually been uh, drafted? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, it's done. It's done. Voted on it, didn't he? Could we? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it actually got sent to a uh, committee from the last meeting. So it did? we passed. Yeah. Oh, and from the fifteenth to here. Oh, I don't. I don't have a copy of that one, but um, I have no problem. Well, I guess I'll ask Jay. Jay Art, can we vote on that one tonight also? Which which one are you asking about? Uh, Miller. That's it's done. That's done. It's all oh, it's that already. Done. That one's waiting one's for the, yeah. yeah, waiting for the signs to go up. That's oh, okay. like that, like that okay. was that was seventy one one oh two nineteen R. Yeah, it was oh, the end okay. of last year. Okay. Yeah, so that's very, that's all very good. Um okay. And I would just add that the difference between the, the last process, the old process and this one, we're doing, we're, it's going to this committee to be discussed, but there's also costs associated with fabricating the signs. Uh, since Ms. Loves was on the old um, way, uh, it was, it's just included in the sign should be made. But I, I'll make a request as the sponsor and this, for Mr. Johnson also that the city waive the fee. These two, uh, folks that were celebrating and, and uh, honoring were a vital part of the city's history and uh, impacted, you know, thousands of lives, uh, countless lives. So I'd, I'd like to request that we re, uh, waive those fees for their sign fabrication. So can we also make that as a voted on rec recommendation? So it's in, in, in the record. So, so, um, on resolution 516220R uh, regarding the naming for Ruby Hughes, do I hear a motion for a favorable recommendation with a request for waiving the signed production cost? I'll make that motion. I second it. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? I'm just curious as to what the fee is that we're waiving. About how much is it? A I was wondering how, how much do they cost? The bill? Bill Trudeau? Bill? Yeah, there, were, there was a fee in the, and I'm looking through the, uh, the paperwork no, that was in passed. The legislation somewhere. It was in the legislation. $50. Oh, oh. and who, who is responsible for uh, paying that normally? The requester is usually re re responsible for the fee. Yep, except when sponsored by a common council member. Except that it's- I accepted. see, thank you. So the cheese automatically waived because it's, both of them are sponsored by common council members. Do I understand? Is that the, is that the understanding? I assume so. Well, well, anyway, we have a motion seconded regarding uh, the street renaming for Ruby Hughes, that it passed with a favorable recommendation with a waiving of the uh, signed production cost. So if we're ready for a vote on that, I would ask for a vote and the committee met. Now, uh, so this is a joint meeting, so I guess it's both the committee members of parks and the committee members of general services, many of whom are the same. It's if, um, for procedure, Mike, it's just the members of DGS since it's solely oh, okay. DGS. So, so the members of DGS are myself, um, Kathy Fahey, Jack Flynn, Derek Johnson, and Abusu Anani. So I would ask for a vote from the general services committee members on the motion for a favorable recommendation on the street renaming for Ruby Hughes with a waiver of the signed production fee. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. So, JR, I assume we have. Uh, Owusu's here, isn't he? Yes. He is. So, and uh, with, that, with that, it's a unanimous. Okay. I see. So, then on uh, the resolution 576220 R, uh, the street uh, honoring William Hank Wallace renaming William Hank Wallace Way. Uh, I, what, do I hear a, a motion for a favorable recommendation 
also with a uh, waiver of the production, the signed production. Aye. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion on nope. that motion? Uh, I'll call for a vote then. All, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes. Aye. And JR, could you count the uh, the votes? I can't it looks like uh, Mr. Nani, what's your what's your vote? Yes. So it's unanimous. Okay. Um, so that being the case, uh, thank you to Bill Trudeau for coming, and uh, we would. Uh, uh, I think, and uh, I'm probably going to ask uh, Jack to lead off on the golf course uh, resolution because that is his. And I believe, do we have uh, Sergio and Frank? And did we ever get anybody from the golf course? I know I had inquired about it today. No. Uh, who, who, who from DGF do we have? I believe Sergio and um, Frank Zoli are here. Yes, we're both here. Okay. Um, did we ever get Scott Gallup? No, he's he never responded. Okay. Well, Jack, why don't you lead off on on this one because that's right. your your resolution and. Thank you all. First of all, I want to wish Wusu a happy birthday today. Oh, I didn't know that. I want to make, I think Wusu wrote my speech birthday. today. No, thank you all. I want to thank all the council members for um, walking the other day at the golf course. The golf course looks great. Uh, DGS staff has done a great job since it's opened. As we all know, the course is one of many parks in the city. You know, we have Hackett, we have Lincoln, Rosemont, Woodlawn, and many other parks. They're all used by non residents and non-residents for walking, exercising, dog walking, social encounters, mental relaxation, and family time. The golf generates money to, so that we can continue our services for the residents and non-residents. There's been talk about the golf course not making a profit, but I think that's wrong. I think part of it is a record keeping, but so far this year, I believe we bring it, brought in $85,000 compared to last year, 68,000. So we're on pace to do a very good job this year. So that's all I have to say. And we can go from there with questions. Well, I had a question for you, Jack. Uh, yep. The uh, spreadsheet, which we got today, yep. uh, seems to be, and they were comparing the time frame from June 17th to June 28th of last year to this year. Right. And I know we did the, uh, the rate increases that we made more this year, but uh, there are two days missing from the spreadsheets, which I got, the 19th and 20th. So I'm thinking that uh, the $70,489 reported uh, from this uh, June between those dates is probably understated because it's missing two days. So with the rate increases, I guess it would be safe to uh, kind of figure out what the daily profits were and add that to the $70,489. Yeah, I believe uh, Sergio resent that. And I, right, Sergio, we sent that, we sent that. And I resent the, the amended, the corrected um, report too. Yeah, like if you add it up, I believe it's an extra 14,000 for both days. And I, I got a number of 85,000. Oh, uh, 85,000? Wow. Yeah, 85,000 plus, yes. Right, Sergio, do you agree with me on that? Hello? Yes, that is correct. Okay. So we're yeah. happy. I'm so happy to hear up, that. Yeah, we're up over 17,000 in revenue, Michael. Okay. Jack, it, it's always been a question, though, of just uh, the expenditures of the golf course because we, I know we share staff with uh, DGS uses their staff for other um, activities as well throughout the city. And I was wondering if Sergio or Frank could address that because it's very hard to get a sense of that is uh, a great just what the costs are. Yep, great question, Kat. 
we did uh, an in-depth analysis of the golf course. Um, the correct amount for this year is 68,000, as Councilman Flynn had expressed, 68,900 change. Had we kept the same amount of revenue cost, not had the increase, we would have lost $41,000. So the rate increase is working in far as neutralizing the cost. The cost of, to run the golf course is $1.2 million a year. At best, at best, the golf course made $850,000. That's at best. That's with no rain day, no other things, at the old rate. That includes the $1.2 million, includes a deduction of $225,000, which I think is generous for the four months that the five employees are assigned to DGS. So that $1.2 million is strictly golf related or golf course, Capitol Hills related uh, maintenance of the course. Okay. Uh, Sergio, can I ask you a question? Uh, I've gone through the budgets going back to uh, uh, 2015, and uh, they consistently show revenues of over $900,000 a year. And these are budgets, you know, where they show the budgeted amount and the corrected amount. And I have not seen them coming in less than $900,000 a year in all the budgets which I've looked at. And then I'm not quite, you were, I know that we had no golfers on it. Normally the golf course would open in mid-April, May. So you have two weeks in April. May is a productive month. This year it didn't open uh, until very late. But I also noticed walking that golf course, even during those months of May and June, uh, that it was, despite what was said by one city official, saying that it was minimum maintenance, it indeed was not minimum maintenance. It was indeed maintained excellently up to golfing standards. So maybe this year there might have been a loss, uh, but I'm wondering if that isn't uh, improper to extrapolate that loss due to COVID back over the past years. My impression is that it has been profitable because Granted, maybe be, because the golfing fees support so many other activities. I use that golf course right through the winter. I walk the dog, I bring my grandkids out, I brought my kids out there, bring my grandkids out there during the winter for, uh, uh, for sleigh riding and just for walking because it is beautiful. Um, and of course, that's one of our, that begs the question why we're here tonight, is aren't there other recreational opportunities that that golf course could support? Because by my estimation, only half of the real estate on that whole golf course is actively golf. There are a lot of old uh, fairways which are mowed. They're not maintained at golf standards, but they're mowed. And there's a lot of trails, hiking trails, cross-country ski trails. So I think as a policy matter, I'm not upset with the fact that maybe the whole golf course throughout the year costs a little more than the golf fees raise. But that's not uh, a failure of our golf course, nor is it any incentive to turn it over to an, a private entity, which then would not make it as available as a city resource. Um, so I was a little confused. You said that if you took the 1.2 million that it costs and then you were subtracting a certain amount that went to then the people who plowed the streets and maybe maintained some of our other parts. I didn't quite get the arithmetic of that calculation which you just gave us. Well, uh, first let me answer your first question which was about the condition of the course. There's a lot of things in the course that a normal person does not see. The bunkers are full of weeds. Normally that's unacceptable. 
the there there are certain aspects of the golf course that it's not up to par to our standards. We notice it, we see it, but a regular person walking through the park says it's in great shape. The course is maintained in good shape, and it's playable. That's the most important thing. The second question is, in the budget, when you look at your budget, it does not include the capital improvements. I give you an example. Last year, in addition to what's published in the budget, out of engineering, $125,000 was spent in addition to what's in the budget to take care of the sidewalk and the pathways. That came out of engineering as a capital project. Um, there were improvements made to the clubhouse. That didn't come out, out of the golf budget. That came out of capital improvements. This year, we've made, we, we, we've protected our, uh, our interest uh, and our investment by uh, avoiding the golf, the golf clubhouse to be flooded with water every time it rains. There's new drains, there's new things, there's new doors that now are all things. Those are all ancillary costs that are, are part of the golf called Capitol Hills that are only used for golf purposes, but are not part of the budget because they're part of the capital. Well, could I re one could of the I things re that we're looking at, one of the things that we're looking at for the future is we have to do a $1.2 million investment on our irrigation system. Our pumps are good. We have now an inventory of all the pumps. We have an, a, a, an established protocol on how to fix the pumps that require, the golf course requires 400,000 gallons a day to keep it green. 400,000 gallons of water a day. We have the two pumps that are in good shape. Some of them were replaced five years ago. We maintain them in good shape. But the irrigation system, the piping, is 25 years old. The lines that bring water to the greens and the tees need to be replaced. That's a $1.2 million investment. That's an early estimate. So we that's gonna come out of a capital project that it's not gonna be included in the golf budget, but it's still expended for the purposes of golfing. The $225,000 that we transfer over for the four months, which again, I'm going to record saying is very generous because during the winter, even though those guys are not golfing, they're maintaining the ski paths. They're maintaining the ski slopes. They're maintaining other aspects of the golf course. Some of them are cutting trees down during that. We have ash board trees. We took down 50 trees this year and we have to take out another 50 next year. Yeah, winter. I've noticed that. And if I could just so, respond. To what, uh, what, what you <clears throat> so when you say that that we use employees here at DGS, it's true. It's true. You're not you're not misstating the fact. However, we only use them during snowstorms, and one or two might be here for the season. That I was aware of. Yes. But for the rest of the season, they're attending to the golf course and the golf course meetings. Okay, so, but I also thought you used them for other parks. And if I could just respond to a couple of things which you said, you said if uh, any ordinary person, <clears throat> and I run myself as an ordinary person, who also happens to golf, and this season has golfed on at least five other courses, I would say Albany uh, Capitol Hills was maintained well, during the season that they had no golfers on it, was maintained to the same standards as Schenectady, Clifton Park, private courses of Mill Road, um, Stadium. Uh, it was well maintained to golfing standards. And I appreciate that because it made opening much quicker when the mayor finally decided that she was gonna open it. Uh, on the things about you, there have capital expenses we have capital expenses for all of our parks, and that's exactly what this is classified as. It's a park, it has a year-round purpose. It's probably one of the few parks, except for maybe, uh, you know, Bleecker Stadium, that actually gets some private revenue uh, to help uh, maintain uh, the 
apparently $1.2 million. You said it's $1.2 million is the real maintenance cost. Um, but at least over 900000 on all the years that I've looked at for the past six years, uh, those numbers have been realized. And it looks like with the rate increases, <clears throat> we will probably, if, if we had had a full season, probably will be able to increase that to a million dollars a year, which probably brings us <clears throat> to the whole point, I think, uh, the point of Jack's resolution, which is we have a gem out there, hundreds of acres, uh, which is probably, the acreage is probably, and I don't know whether you know this, I'm just estimating this, having walked that golf course hundreds of times, I would say probably 50% of the real estate of that golf course is not fairways. Uh, and <clears throat> I walked some of those wooded paths. I walked the, uh, the power line trail right over to Stevens Farms. Uh, I walked right down to the Norman Skill on that. Um, and uh, I would think that there probably is <clears throat> uh, a greater potential for recreational activities on some of that land without an awfully super big investment. Uh, obviously some investment, yes, because <clears throat> if you were gonna allow people to walk out that thing that I call O'Neill Road, which was the original farm road, I guess, or the original golf course road called O'Neill Road, uh, you can't walk out that, out that now in the season because the driving range is right smack next to it. But if you put up a net, which many golf courses have to separate their driving ranges from fairways, then that, that road could actually be used during, uh, during the middle of the golfing season, the middle of the day. Uh, and then of course, and this is more a question probably for Jonathan Jones. Uh, you know, I don't regard golfing as an elite sport. I regard it as a, ordinary person sport, but I think uh, you could probably get a lot of kids. And uh, when we were doing our walk, we were talking to some people who said that, and this could just be the perception of the people that we were talking to, but it, it may also be true, was that they used to have more youth golf. I mean, I know golf courses that do youth golf camps. And I don't know whether we have that schedule this year. I don't know to what extent we had it in years past. But to me, <clears throat> golfing is a very good sport for, for kids, particularly for, for teenagers or even for, even for younger than that. Because it's a sport, particularly in COVID times, you can maintain your distance, but it's a sport that's enjoyable and can stay with you for a hell of a long time. So those are some of the things that I wanted to raise and I, you know, some of the questions. I don't think it's a losing proposition. I personally don't think it should be sold off because then we would be losing all of those other additional, well, I, I haven't heard you guys say that, but there've been rumors that uh, that's one of the things that was being looked at. So I don't want to monopolize them all of the time, but those are some of my <laughs> and I'll yield over to some other people. Well, Back. if I if I may, if I may, you 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 hit it right in the head. Um, one one of the things that myself and Commissioner Jones talked about pre-COVID. This is all because of COVID. We I talked about raising the cost of the golf course. Uh, to balance it out to make it a neutral. No other part, we have the ability to at least cover the cost, except Gallopin Hill. It is my belief that Gallopin Hill, uh, Cap Capitol Hill, I'm sorry, Capitol Hill, uh, is one of the exclusive golf courses in, in, in the area and should be that. Hence, it's a beautiful course. And, and, and it's a beautiful course, it's beautiful maintained, whatever. Uh, and one of the things that myself and Commissioner Jones spoke about pre-COVID is what are we doing with a tennis court? Two people out of the whole year use a tennis court. Can we okay. do something? Uh, we also talked about, we also talked about um, 
having a trail. Uh, and now engineering is going to, now that COVID is over, maybe we can get, start getting on it. So that the dog walkers can have all year round access in the area that exactly you're talking about. So yeah. we don't have to separate. We don't have to separate. But that was all pre-COVID and then COVID happened and everything stopped. Um, one of the things that I'm not happy with as, as the manager is the status quo of the golf course. Part of the, part of the thing is we do not uh, uh, we, we do not use our best resources that we have. Uh, meaning, uh, I like to see a lot more marketing for that golf course. I'll give you an example. Um, young golf course, uh, uh, a summer youth golf program could be instituted. Um, but the status quo is to maintain the golf course the way it is. Let's not, uh, our golf pro should be more involved. He should be marketing a lot of that. But the bottom line is, he has no incentive because the golfers come and he has no incentive to grow as a golf course. One of the things that we, uh, I'm proposing this year after the race is Veterans Day. Why can't we have a Veterans Day weekend and all the veterans get a discount uh, uh, playing golf in honor in honor of the, of, of the veterans. Uh, it's 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 Pride Month. Why don't we have something that uh, uh, Pride could could be celebrated at the golf course? Mother's Day, Father's Day. We are not marketing because no matter what, whether we have one golfer, hundred golfer, or a thousand golfer, the golf pro still makes his salary. That's the problem. We do not have a mechanism in there to stimulate and grow the golf course. Whether we have one golf course, a thousand or a hundred, he still makes a tremendous amount of money. Plus he has concessions. Plus he has concessions, which is another hidden fact. So one of the things that we are looking at is revamping the golf course. We don't want to, I don't know where, where, where the rumor is that we're going to sell the golf course, privatize the golf course. None of that, none of that was ever part of at least my conversations or with my team here and at the golf course. Um, but we certainly want to make it, uh, uh, we don't want to make a profit out of it. We're just going to cover as many costs as we possibly can. And that's understood that we're going to probably lose some money because if you have another year like last year where we had 11 weekends of rain, where the golf course was closed for 12 days, you know, we're not gonna generate funds. But at the same time, we need to stimulate the growth of the golf course and make it and make it this the gem that- I would, so, sir, Mike, can I respond? Sure. <laughs> Well, Sergio, you're right. That's the point of this resolution because there's so many ideas that we could use. And that's the point of this going forward um, with the golf course. Michael? Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna... can, I, can, I, can I follow up on that? This yeah, is what, yeah. this is Corey. I'm confused. And the reason why I'm confused, Sergio, you say this is what we can, this is what we can do. We own a golf course, correct? Yes. Yeah. So why are we acting as if, Sergio, the things you're saying can't be done? What, what is the reason if we own the golf course, those things that you said, Sergio, talking about generate more revenue, advertising, if we own the course, why isn't it happening? Because until I got here, no one really looked at the revenue and the generation and the operation of the golf course. That is my focus. That was my focus for 2020. And that's what I needed to discuss. But then COVID happened and everything was stopped. Well, Sergio, I, I hear that. But, you know, I took the tour Saturday and those guys up there had some great ideas. And it doesn't sound like these ideas just came about. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what I'm confused about. 
you know, guys who up there have been working up there, they said, Corey, we can do this. We, you know, we, we, we used to sell plaques to people on different holes, on holes, we corporate sponsorship. So it's just funny to me that these guys have these ideas of generating revenue and you talk about that and it hasn't ha happened. I don't think this is the first time uh, people have been talking about this. So that's why I'm just trying to figure out. Well, they, it's convenient that they're talking about it now. These same people have been there for years. Where were these ideas before? Well, that's what it is. It's convenient that they have an audience of common council members. It's convenient that there's been a, uh, the golf course was closed because of COVID and the lack of funding. It's convenient that they're using the soapbox now when they have an audience, but when they didn't before, when they were involved. That's the sponsorship. I brought it up at a meeting while I was screaming at everybody. Mm. And say, you know, and no, say so. we're losing money, we're sifting money out of, and it's not fair to the rest of the taxpayers that don't golf. Mm. So why can't we get sponsors? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? All of those ideas, all of those ideas were probably not looked at or maybe not even considered because the golf course was the golf course. And, and until now, where we are asking people to think outside the box, look into events, and do things better, incorporate the, the golf course, and keep it at a- Can I just level. say something here? And, oh, can, I, can I, I, can I, I, I just Mike? Mike, I, Mike. So, to I just wanted to say this too. Uh, you know, to Corey's point, where does the buck stop when it comes to this decision making? Does it stop? Well, at that's an excellent point. And you know, I was going to wait. Does it stop with Sergio? That's what I, is it yes or no? Like that's what I'm saying. You're like, talking about you're ideas. Saying, these ideas. Can I finish? Okay. You're talking about these ideas. These are the first time they're hearing about this, but we've been hearing about these ideas for years. So it's. It, I just want to be clear. Does it stop in the mayor's office or does it stop in your office uh, as it relates to implementing some of these ideas? And also, I want to add. You've been here for years, but they haven't been talking to the right people now. Okay. And also, I would like to add, you know, I hear about um, something for veterans, some for the LGBTQ community. The, the golf course lack of diversity. So I want you to also think about African Americans who exist in this city. Also, if we could do something for, you know, in the month of June, during Juneteenth, they could also have some free golf um, at the Capitol Golf Course. Because I've been to the golf course several times, and the lack of diversity that exists at this golf course it's unreal. So, you well, know, actually, I'm glad that you come to, to, come right. to ideas, and I hope that, you know, you, you think about the diversity that exists here in the city of Albany when you're coming up with these ideas. I, yeah. I, 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 as chairman, could I just say something, please, Sergio? Uh, two things. Uh, Awusu, I agree with you. It could be more diverse. But my observation, looking at a lot of other golf courses, and this golf course is probably one of the most diverse. It should become more diverse, and just and not just in 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 terms of golfing members, in terms of other people who can come out and uh, use it. But I do find I have you know, Sergio, some of what you say uh, I would have to question because you said that uh, you know that these creative ideas, thinking outside of the box, didn't exist before you got here. Well, I must disagree. I think it did. They had a lot of uh, sponsorships on, uh, on the courses. They had people dedicating trees, make, getting a plaque, making money there, which I haven't seen in the last few years. So to say that nobody was thinking outside of the box or nobody was engaging a creative process before you got here simply is not true. So, uh, and then to say that, I don't know, that when we hear people saying, gosh, you know, uh, they could be doing more and saying that they're on a soapbox, I think that's a bad attitude to have towards your own workers. And with that, I'm gonna be quiet for, for a while. Uh, I, I, I can't speak for the past, and I maybe, maybe- Well, you seem to be speaking for the past before, just a few minutes ago. Uh, well, what I'm saying is that as of 2020, it was in the plan to implement some of these things. And then we know what happened in 2020 COVID. We had, we had a plan. We, we did discuss in the middle of the November and December of last year, the raising of the fees. We did discuss all of these things that unfortunately came to a halt because of the COVID. 
Now we're let's let's look at the future. The future is we need to rethink how we manage the course. We need to rethink how the operation of the course has. But putting a a a a, a, a an operational committee to tell us how to run the golf course, it, it, I think it's kind of productive. Well, you know, I was going to ask you a question about that because I'm not sure the we. Sergio, can I just respond? I think you're going to take a break. What? I think you're going to take a break, Mike. Why don't you let somebody else? Jack, we have in the we have in the queue. We have David Gallen, Tom Homie, Tom Hoey, Alfredo Ballerin, Derek Johnson, Kathy Fahey, and Joe Igo. <laughs> How do you want to proceed? Who would you like to speak first? Given the number of participants that have hand raised, do you want to uh, hear from David Gallen from the mayor's office to provide his perspective and then move on to the other council members? Yeah, go with committee members first too. Just yeah, like committee that. members who go first. So did, well, why don't we have the mayor's office speak because Dave may be able to answer some of those questions. Well, do you, do you want DJ? Because I know DJ hasn't spoken to or Joyce or Kathy. I mean, do you want, uh, however you want to do it, but I, I'm deferential to the committee members. I would, I would just like, I would just like a Wusu's question to get answered. I think that um, he asked um, a decent question and um, it never got a response. So he asked two questions that um, didn't get response and um, they should be able to um, respond to it. Mike, you got to unmute. I'd like to hear a response to some of the questions which, which got, got raised. And, okay. So uh, just to repeat I, the question again, um, Sergio, as it relates to African-Americans and also the lack of diversity that exists, is there any kind of thought behind as it relates to how we could increase the diversity that ex the lack of diversity that exists at the golf course? And also maybe like Juneteenth, is a month that is being celebrated here in the city of Albany. Can African Americans and also African Americans golf for free during that month of June? Mm. Um, to answer your question, yes, 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 and yes. Uh, when we market, when we market the, the programs, like I said, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Juneteenth uh, month celebration, there would be an inclusion on diversity. Um, if that's what you're talking about, absolutely. As far as personnel, we're limited by labor restriction. We can't just put, uh, we, we have to go by seniority and civil service and yada, yada, yada. But as far as marketing, I think it's an, it, in my opinion, personally, I think it's a, it's an untapped resource, um, that we should follow, but uh, you know, people don't know. They're not educated about the course of the course. They're not educated about the game. Hence comes the, the pro that needs to market that into a package and give free lessons maybe. I don't know. Whatever whatever it takes to do. The, the key to the golf course success is the more golfers go, put on a, on a ball on the ground and tee off, the, the better their revenues are for everyone. Wow. That's the key. Hello? Derek? Derek, do you have yes. anything, Derek? No, I'm... I'm Joyce Love, do you have I'm anything? On. Kathy Fay, you're on the committee. Yes, thank you. Um, these are all great ideas. I think we need to look forward here. Absolutely. I mean, there is a lack of diversity. That, that should be... Uh, you know, one of the first charges here. Um, and so many good ideas have been brought up during this crazy time that we've had. There have been so many walkers uh, using that golf course. There's, there's uh, I know myself um, because I'm, I've been involved over the years with the Stevens Farm and I've walked over to the golf course. It is unmarked at, and you know, it's hard to know where the trails begin, where they stop and so on and so forth. What's safe, what isn't. So I would, I would say please uh, add that to your charge as far as um, expanding the use of the golf cart, uh, golf course. Um, and I, 
I wonder too if uh, these two committees can, uh, you know, give the charge to the Department of General Services and uh, Parks and Recreation and um, to develop a plan for the golf course. Do we really need another committee that is formed to look at this? Uh, our council committees here can uh, follow up on this. I mean, we're talking about all the different things we'd like uh, general services and, and our recreation program to look at, uh, and then perhaps, you know, we can give them the charge to bring a program back to us to review, because all the ideas that are being raised are, are very good and important ones. Kathy, I totally agree with you. I mean, do I need to do a resolution or go to committee? I hope not, but I, I'm liking uh, Sergio's ideas and, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Who's next? Joe Igo? Anyone? Okay. Well, I have some experience out there. I started working there when I was 14 years old at the old golf course. It was so bad you couldn't put a tee in the ground. The tennis courts that Sergio talked about, why they aren't being used, they're facing the wrong way. That's why nobody ever played on it. This one person was always hitting into the sun. There was ideas for an executive nine out there. It was supposed to go right up to where the driving range is. And I don't think you can make, make that happen now because of the driving range and the way they situated, I believe it's probably now the eighth hole. Uh, and that was meant, it was going to be when they set it up, it was for youth, for teaching youth, getting the youth involved, because that was the staple back then. And that was the intent of Mayor Corning and everybody else. That's why it was a dollar and a quarter a day. It kept the kids busy. And all the people I knew that played out there, they became great, great golfers. They were club champs at every place from the Roos to Albany Country Club Colony, and they got their start there. Some of them are still playing, unfortunately. I was way behind, not in their league. Uh, and the marketing, when we talk about the marketing, marketing and sponsorship, well, you know what? I think we've been trying that for other parks and we can't get anything for Bleecker, for Swinburne, whatever. It's not in the same league, but it's, it's very, been very difficult. Uh, as far as getting golfers out there, well, they had a lot of leagues. And uh, I don't know, it was maybe four or five years ago, they got the leagues that I thought that was going to help, help play. Well, most of the leagues this year that were still there are over in Norman side and because they gave them a cut half price. And I don't know if we'll get them back. And there were a lot of good residents and city workers, police, fire, you name it. That's where they went. Uh, I do know that back when Bob Moore was the pro there, that they had aerial photos done. I don't know if they're still around, but if they aren't, I suggest to get you a good overall look at it. Maybe a drone could put some of them together give you a real good idea of what you got to work with. Because some of it that they separated, like you talked, Mike, O'Neill Road, okay? O'Neill Road was a, a road to a farm down there. It was a Kaminsky farm. That's where they say it's flat as a table where they put in all those holes down there, okay? Uh, at one time, there was a tree farm down there that Frederick Avan owned because the city was paying too much for their own trees. So this farm got started down there but Fred died and all the trees sat there, okay? And they got so big, so big they couldn't take them out there to replant in the city. I mean, there's so many, so many things that's, you know, diversity, diversity, you get the youth out there and you're gonna build diversity. You know, because golf I think is becoming like uh, bowling, okay? Bowling's kind of falling to the wayside. If you don't get the youth involved in, in golf, this place is gonna forget it. You'll have a, you know, a farm out there again. But, I just had a lot of ideas and whatever. Another question I'd like to know is, do we get paid anything at all for having the national grid lines go through the golf course? Yeah. Just some quick ideas, but thank you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, can somebody answer that question? Do we get money from the national grid? Uh, I believe that, I believe what engineering looked at because we were thinking, again, before this all started, um, we were thinking of designating that as a parking space for the dog walkers, the walkers, and then enter from that area. Uh, we, which we would have, we would have to build a, a path for a segment 
which is safe for the golfer and safe for the walker. Um, but we believe that there is a right of way. I don't think we could get money out of it. I'll check with engineering again once this project is. That property is ours, but they do have a right of way to put the, the power lines on. So I, I think that- Sergio, right. what about the lot before you, on the left-hand side, before you go to the golf course where National Grid that keeps all their equipment? Is that ours or theirs? That, that's ours. That's, ours. that's our property. That we have a stole shed there, but they have a right of way for the power okay. lines. That and would be a great part of it. Every time they put a truck, they do ask the permission of the golf superintendent to do that. And we accommodate in spirit of cooperation. Thank you. You know, just one other thing, knowing that I've worked out there, there is a lot more that uh, people never see. They never see the work that starts in the fall when nobody's golfing, top dressing, the greens, et cetera, the stuff early in the morning, the fungicide, the how often the greens have to be sprayed. And that's some of the work that I know might not have been being done, the real finite and important stuff because there's expense to that. But again, I, I haven't been out there, but I know other people say how good it looks other than your traps. So that's it. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. Thank, thank, you, Joe. thank you, Joe, for noticing that. We appreciate it. We, uh, yeah, we're, we're trying our best under the condition that we're under. Who's next, JR? I think Alfredo. Uh, I, I mean, I have mine in order of who raised their hands. So I have Tom Hoey and Alfredo and then David Gowan. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I enjoyed the walk. We, I was a little bit around three miles that we walked on Saturday morning. Seven. Um, I didn't realize how big the golf course was. Um, Sergio, I just want to give you a history that I know. I'm in Albany a little over 30 years. When I first moved up here, there was a big push to, pri uh, to develop and put up luxury housing in some parts of the uh, golf course. And uh, it was a pretty big fight from what I remember, what I heard. So I think a lot of people are worried, this is uh, you know, property that we should keep forever wild and whether it's a golf course, whatever it evolves to. Um, I have a couple of questions and then suggestions for Jonathan Jones too. Um, Years ago, I heard that they rented uh, cross country skis and snowshoes. And I know a lot of people will go up into um, Rensselaer up in the hills there to do that. And we have this capability right here. Has there been any thought of going back to that, to renting equipment? We rent skates at Swinburne Park. It might be a way to, to do revenue. Deep down though, I mean, parks should be free. I mean, that's the bottom line park is, uh, you know, for the citizens uh, or the residents of a community to be able to go to, especially now with all the density buildings we're putting up and there's very little green space, parks are a nice for free. And as we see during the COVID, people do want to get out and be able to have that social distancing and having that golf course open and, and wide like that is, um, you know, really fantastic. My second point I wanted to find out, and Jonathan Jones, you're there and I'm glad to see you. As you know, I was on this committee, uh, I got taken off this year, but previously I was on it and I was looking for soccer fields. Um, and we walked there, there are so many fields there. Could we turn, do a, like a soccer type of, not stadium, but an area where we can have tournaments and stuff, which are great revenue uh, builders. Uh, I know other cities do this. They have teams from all over come in. The hotels benefit, the restaurants benefit. Our kids would benefit in having really good uh, fields to practice on. So I'm just wondering, could we use some of that real estate on the golf course and do this, uh, the soccer fields like we've been talking about? Thank you. Just to respond to the councilman, um, like the like Commissioner Panuzio said, I'm open to any using any play space we have to make it for the best use of sport, whether that's a tennis court and turn it into a pickleball court or something different. Um, to go back, uh, the skis in which you were talking about, that was in partnership with a guy named Russ Myers um, from the Capital Region Nordic Alliance. Um, Russ uh, is still around. He's still doing that. And it was through an orienteering program. 
The second piece, though, was we had a golf camp there in 2016. Uh, we had 27 youth there in 2015 and 2016. And our young people were afforded the opportunity to go to the Barclays to see the, the best compete. Um, that program uh, was stopped so that the golf pro can continue his camp and there would be no competition. So we've had a golf camp there. We have a model that works. PGA is still a part of our, our membership opportunities and they're looking to work with us. So anything is possible to bring that back. And then orienteering, um, the skis and such that Russ was able to provide, the cost uh, was, <laughs> was pretty big, but I think he would be open if his organization is, is looking into that to continue that work. And what about the soccer fields? I'm open to using the space where we can. I think the drone idea is a good idea to start to see what area would be safe to do that. Um, as the commissioner said, we had a conversation in late November to talk about the trails. But, you know, again, it's, it's more about functional space. And I think at the end of the day, once we do an assessment of the current um, environment there, we can look at other options that will make sense. I, uh, to, to be honest, I don't think, uh, I don't think we can grow uh, soccer field grass there. It's very sandy and clay. Um, so, I mean, something that we can put on the table, definitely, and do some soil sampling and see what it, what it might be. Uh, I, 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 from what I saw, and, and, and it's very clayish, and, and as a matter of fact, that's part of the problem where we have to use 400,000 gallons uh, of water because of the clay doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't good. But something we could definitely look at, but our trails could definitely be, could be definitely upgraded. Uh, our dog walkers could have a, a, a year round area. That's certainly, certainly doable. And it can be done uh, within a year or two uh, with minimal amount of cost. And, and definitely as, as Commissioner Jones has said, we, we did have this conversation, but then COVID happened and that everything went on hold. But I, I'm surprised to hear that that the golf pro has his clinic, which generates money for him, and the taxpayers of Albany uh, are suffering, especially the minorities, uh, uh, which, as, as Jones has alluded to, uh, there was a high participation, 27 participants, in, 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 a, in a youth program. Yeah, I mean, again, these are the things that, that 2020 was going to bring for me an assessment, a deep dive micro analysis on where can we maximize our potential. Again, keeping the taxpayers of Albany at an advantage, not a disadvantage. What got us in this, into this, uh, uh, this this uh, the situation is a hands-off approach, but now I got my hands in it, and and yes, the buck stopped with me, and sure. and, uh, and and there will be improvements. Sergio, can I follow up on that question? I have a question on here about the golf pro, and maybe Dave Gallon can answer it. Probably has to do with the contract with the pro. Does the pro uh, slash vendor what revenue does he get? Do I assume he gets the money? from the sales in the golf pro and that's it? Because I know years ago, and I know Joe Igo knows this, the golf pro got a percentage. What's that? I, I, can, I can speak to that. I can speak to that. All right, yeah, um, just so I know. Yeah, so uh, the golf pro sells his, yeah. he sells his um, uh, uh, product. Yeah. He sells lessons, um, his product indoors, he does lessons, and then he gets a, a, a straight fee for his services. Right. Um, but as Sergio has alluded to before, uh, there's no incentive there for him to grow our business. Okay. You know, it really, there's a lot of things that the contract states the golf pro should be doing and the golf pro isn't really doing it. So that's something that we were looking at at the end of last year, again, and looking to may not have been able to make those change that change in 20, but definitely make some other changes because again, it all, as you said, the buck stops here, it all flows downhill. The golf pro is gonna set the, the, the stage, set the tone for the entire course. And we need, we need better work on that. Frank, does he get a percentage of like tournaments or anything like that? Cause I'm, I'm hearing he does, or am I wrong? Yes, 
Besides his salary, he, he makes we uh, and that's this is what we could tell a very an extra fifty to seventy thousand dollars besides his salary. It, 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 say, he's doing very well. Did you say fifty to seventy? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. In addition to in addition to his regular salary, which is ninety three thousand dollars a year. So I mean, I definitely think that it's something that we've talked about here. Um, with our with, with, with our group is what changes, how can we change just the way that the golf course is run is managed at the top? What are the what's the role of the golf pro? What's the role of the superintendent? What's the role, you know, how does it affect the residents? Well, you know, what are the what's the cost? What's the scheduling. I mean, we were we were talking about this, you know, December, January, and then COVID hit. So I mean a lot of this stuff was in the works prior to this. And I'll be honest, the Sergio got stuck up on the pro quite a bit, and he kept saying, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right, uh, you know, and that's what we need to look at. Thanks. Alfred, is Alfredo next, JR? Yeah. I have a series of questions and comments. Um, first, my first question is coming based on the information that was just shared. Who does the golf pro report to directly? No, the golf pro is technically a vendor. We have, uh, we put out an RFP and we solicit uh, different vendors, golf pros, and whoever comes up uh, uh, usually is, is the only one. Um, we, uh, that's that's what it is. It's a vendor like like uh, mechanics are, like uh, like Nissan is to a, to a thing. One of the things that we're looking at is making that position as city employee. It might be beneficial for us to do that as a city employee, so that we do not have this lessons and this clinics and these things that that stop us from reaching out to the different different areas of the communities. But that's your answer. The answer is, 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 a, is a request for a proposal, uh, and, and that's what it is, it's a contract. Okay. Um, I, I, I was happy to attend the, uh, the walkthrough on Saturday. I have to be honest with you, I have, I'm not a golfer, and I haven't had the opportunity to walk through our golf course in the past, and I was, I was really impressed by what I saw. I was really impressed by the fact that this is a hidden gem, maybe not hidden to many of you here, but very, probably very hidden to people in my neighborhood and in the communities that I represent. Um, so when I hear that programs that could bring our young people to that gem are being held by any valley, I have a very, serious problem with that. Because golf is a great sport. I never got to participate in it. I never got exposed to it as a child. But it's also a sport where you find people that do business at the golf course. And by our young people not being exposed to this, you're limiting their opportunities for their professional growth as they get older. So for me, I would really like to see Commissioner Jones and uh, his program and his team to have an opportunity to run those programs again on our, on, our, on, on our golf course, because it is the city's golf course. It is the taxpayer's golf course. My taxpayers are paying for it, just like the golfers, just like everybody else that, that is using it. And it's a treasure. I don't want to see it get sold. I think it's, it's a, a uh, a gem that can be a profitable gem. It, it has a lot of opportunities and un, as we've spoken here, untapped resources. So we should tap into it. Um, one thing that we, we noticed was that the horse, there's 18 horse. We don't sell sponsorships. If we sold, just like the Valley Cats do, the Valley Cats, when you go to their games, you see the ads on the on the wall, they're getting paid for those ads on 
on their wall. We can get three to $5,000 probably a season per hall. That would revenue would bring in between fifty-four and ninety thousand dollars a season. That's real money. That's money that it can make that then can go back to our parks that don't in our communities that don't get to enjoy this resource. That's an equitable way of actually addressing the fact that this beautiful gem, not everybody gets to enjoy. But if it can bring in it, it can not just pay for itself, but actually bring in a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar profits, then those funds can go back to park and recreations to fix our parks. So that we're not looking at a limited of a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to try to bring up one of our little parks, then maybe we can bring in more resources to those neighborhoods. Because a lot of those parks are struggling as well. Um the soccer fields, you know, we saw a lot of empty, empty spaces there. Um, and we got a lot of calls last budget season about these soccer fields. Um, I think that's something we should have a serious look at. Um, I, I, I heard what you said about the, the grass, but there's got to be a solution. It's also a solution to a problem, maybe turf field. I don't know if you can play soccer on a turf field. I know there's issues with turf fields as well but we should look at how we can maximize the space. The space should not just be used by a few residents. This space should be opened up and have access for more residents than currently are, are being engaged. It, if, if we know that not, not many of our residents from our, all of our wards are taking advantage of it, then we should do something about it. Because if it's costing us $1.2 million to deal with, even if it's only costing us $200,000, know, uh, you know, we're not spending that much to maintain some of our smaller parks. I don't think we spend nowhere near that much to maintain the only park that we have in my ward. So it needs to be fair. And I'm gonna say this, Sergio, the buck starts with you. You said it. It, 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 it stops with you. So whatever we are talking about, whatever you're discussing, push it through. You know, what you're saying here has support from many of our members. No one wants to see this gem be lost. So if you're talking about sponsorships, if you're talking about finding ways for this to become a positive, then see us as a resource. So as you don't see us as as a, uh, a, a barrier. See us as, a, as another group that can be advocating with you for these changes. So I guess that's all I wanted to say. And I guess I'll get off my soapbox. That, thank you for your support. And, and like I said, uh, I, I never, I never uh, thought of the council being an enemy, but this is all was going to be rolled out pre-COVID, um, and unfortunately, COVID happened. And you know, we, there was discussion about this last year, so November, December, October, and then COVID happened, and everything went to went to uh, stop, full stop. But I plan to continue to serve the people that I'm entrusted to serve, equitable, as fair as possible. And, and, and as, 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 as the best as I can. And if I need to tap your resources, I thank you for your support. Thank you. Hey, Mike. Um, yeah. I had a, a couple of thoughts on what has been said. Um, I know Kathy made a point that do we need another committee? Well, I think your idea that we should have another committee was generated by the fact that we were not communicated with uh, over a period of time, particularly the six weeks that the golf course didn't open when others did. We were just in a void as to understanding why. I mean, I guess the issue, and I think, Jack, this is what you were trying to get at with establishing a committee, is we want a way of being, you know, it seems to me that maybe Sergio has had discussions, maybe Jonathan has had discussions, 
but we weren't included, and I think we should be. And not necessarily, you know, does it have to be a committee the way, way it's proposed to be structured? I don't know. But I think it has to be a, a conversation that any council member can be part of, uh, like we have not been before. Like, for example, I'm shocked when uh, Jonathan, whom I respect a lot, uh, said that uh, basically the golf pros um, golf camp pushed out the rec department's golf uh, golf camp. That's outrageous. And we never knew about it. I mean, maybe Sergio, you probably knew about it. Jonathan, you did. But that's the kind of information we'd like to have. And, um, you know, I'm sure Sergio has some good ideas and uh, Jonathan does. But the problem is <clears throat> it just seemed like uh, a void that happened and we couldn't explain why it was closed for six weeks when it should have been open and people asked us and we didn't get any answers. So I don't know, I guess, I really, I guess I'm raising the issue of how do we want to structure this resolution? Are we going to create a committee to look at it? How should the committee be constituted? Should it have open meetings? Obviously, I think it should. Um, and then I guess my big question is, when does this Golf Pros contract expire? I mean, maybe Sergio has a good idea that the pro could be a city employee. I don't know. I don't know how the other city golf courses do it. I guess we should see what Schenectady or Troy or, you know, some of the other municipal courses do. Uh, but it just seems to me like, gosh, I'd love to be that golf pro. He's getting a hell of a lot of money. Hey, Mike, I believe Dave Gallant can answer that because I know his, his contract expired on June 1st. And then what happened after that, Dave? His contract is, what, was up on June 1st? Dave, can you is, talk about that or is that not talking I don't, about I don't know how long it runs, but his contract was recently renewed this spring. Renewed? Mike, well, like, from what I was told, his contract expired June 1st. Can you answer that? It was, paused. it was paused for a couple weeks when the golf course wasn't opening um, and then was re reinstated when the golf course was opened. I don't, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was like two weeks where his contract was. Yes, yes. yeah. And it, it, the contract, it will uh, uh, it'll, uh, terminate December 31st of 2020 with two one year options to extend. We do not have to extend, but we are able to if need be. So that's where we're at. And it was only paused for a few weeks. And the reason why it was renewed, again, because of COVID, the contract expired December 31st. By the time legal reviewed it, we sent out our comments. COVID happened, and we had to sign a contract, knowing, expecting to go for it to be open. So, but we, we definitely plan to take a deeper look. Deeper Can I look. just make a comment? Uh, certainly COVID didn't mandate that we don't talk to each other. And we have all these technical means of talking with, with each other. So, so I didn't know that the golf pro had muscled out the rec department. Somebody must have known that. Who made the decision to rehire him? And didn't this even occur to him that that might be a very big thing that he should be talked about with? That we are a whole city of, as Wusser says, diverse people. And they all have a right to have a seat at the table, at least in terms of getting a modicum of, of services. So COVID can't be overblamed for people not communicating. Well, I, I, I mean, to that. I can't, hold, hold on. I, 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 can only, I can only say this. I can only say this. I like to present to the council or whoever asks anything when I have the facts in front of me. Unless I have the facts, I don't want to be wrong and I don't want to portray any misinformation, mislead anyone. <laughs> Again, this is, the first, this is the first year that we now know that we have, we have equipment, the registration, how much the equipment is worth. What the, this is the first year that we have included the golf course equipment. We have included the golf course expenses. We are taking a micro analysis of everything, including the golf course and, and the golf pro. So the communication to me is, you're right, 
we we could have we could have been we could have been uh, more uh, open about it, but we didn't know all the facts until now. Um, well, my, to me, I, that seems to be oh. saying that until you have perfect answers, you aren't even going to listen to our questions. I think we should be part of the communication because no one has all the answers. And if the excuse is I wait until I have all the answers to respond, then there's no communication. There's no response. It's not, not the answers, the facts. And, and, you facts. Know, there's a big difference between answers hmm. and facts. Well, Frank and uh, Sergio, you know, we sent you emails to get you to come to this meeting, four emails, before you even responded. Was that because you didn't think you had the right answers? I mean, to me, that's not a good way of yeah. fostering growth and developing cooperation. Right. There were many emails. It took a while to get. So yeah. Roy, can, can, yes. can I yes. say something? Uh, Joyce, let Joyce speak. Uh, yeah, I, and I'm hearing every, what everybody's saying. And everybody is correct. But we sitting here and we going round and round and around. Why don't we just form a committee? And work this out. I think it should be a couple council members that sit on a committee to work this out with Sergio and who are, if we have to be working through the mayor's office. That's what I think because we get nowhere right now when everybody's playing the blame game. And, I, and if we can play the blame game, because I see it. But because my ward don't know nothing about the golf course, course up there, and neither does the fifth. But I'm just saying, we going round and round, and everybody is correct of what they're saying. But why don't we just form a committee with the council members and iron this out? Well, Instead that, of playing the playing game. Yeah, but the thing is, the existing committee structure can handle this. Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure for uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Jones' point about the golf pro, I'm not even sure Sergio was here when that happened. Um, but, but in any case, I, I think we need to be better at communicating go, going forward. We don't need to, uh, you know, create a new committee to do this. Uh, that what we're doing here right now. Uh, well, who's on the committee, uh, um, Kelly? Who's on the committee? Well, either, it, either it can fall under Parks and Rec or, or uh, General Services, but we certainly don't need to create a special committee to handle but, this. Uh, what I'm asking you, who is on the committee now? There is no committee. There's there is no committee. What? It's, it's, no, it's, that's what the point is. The and point is that- a lot of members. Joyce, the point is- May I make a suggestion? Um, I, I do agree with Councilman Kimbarrow that creating a specific committee, and, and you know, what, where does it end? This is really a DGS issue. We should meet quarterly as a DGS committee where we give you updates um, and maybe Jones could be there with us as well. Uh, but there, 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 there's enough structure there to not reinvent the wheel and have a committee. We could, we could tell you that on a first quarter, for example, we plan to do execute A, B, and C, and D. And by the next quarter, you know what A, B, and C, and D it was done, it was not done, and why it wasn't done. So, I, I think, I, I think structurally, I, I agree. And keeping <laughs> keeping the charter the way it is, where it's legislative and operational, I, I think I, I, I think it's better to keep it. Did you guys all put on recreation? It doesn't matter. I think recreation is going to come back to us anyway. But well, well can I make a, a, a recommendation to move this out of committee? Hold on. All right. Like to make Hold a on, Joyce. Statement before. Dave, Dave Gallon speak. Do you have something? Oh, I'm to say? sorry, Dave didn't speak. That's okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, part of I wanted to listen and hear where everybody stood because I, I was curious of you know where where that sound. It's there's clear there's been a disconnect with things in the past, but I, and I won't belabor them. Um, but I, I think from the moving forward standpoint. We, I mean, we agree, and Sergio and Frank have touched on a lot of it. We agree that there can be more programming. It could be more diverse programming. There can be more opportunities for residents across the city at the golf course. Um, I think Alfredo brought it up that this is a golf course. It's not just 
for the eighth ward residents, it's paid for by the entire city um, and the taxpayers of the entire city. So uh, the, the, the concern I have with the, with the resolution is exactly what, what Kelly and Kathy and a few other people have touched on is we're, we're creating another committee where we already can't find people to serve on committees as it is. And then, but at the same time, we have this committee structure here where we have the joint, however the council would want to do it. I mean, you have the count, the joint committees for general services and parks. Um, I, I don't see why we can't meet quarterly as Sergio proposed with both committees to, to hammer out the issues and, and work on suggestions and proposals. I just, I, I, I'm very, very concerned. I mean, we can't find people to serve on ACPAC. We can't find people to serve on the, on the um, sustainability advisory committee. Sure. Sometimes we can't find oh, people to serve Dave, on- I've only got 20 people that want to serve on this committee. Oh, oh. I understand that, but, oh, oh. but Jack, part of that too is it's 20 people that I'm assuming are mostly the eighth ward residents. It's, it's not going to be an a interest subset in of, of no. the whole of the whole city not, and, and not, I think yeah. are as, as council members who represent you know two-thirds of the entire city plus you know there's there there are folks here that aren't on either of these committees that are in the meeting tonight so i just i i i really really i i, I agree with sergio 100 percent. we don't need another committee when we have a committee right here we've we we it's clear that you all have concerns that you've raised from your constituents well, well, and, and that's what i meant dave by the committee by the council members. That's what I meant. I'm not saying we have bringing outside people. I'm talking about within the council. Understood. And I, and I think, you know, again, like you said, Joyce, you, when you were asking who the people are, I, my answer to that, I think- It's nobody. These, but I think it's these, I think it's the group of you, the 10 of you right here that, that are part of these two committees that, that oversee both general services, you know, DGS runs the park, but it's rec and parks because it is a park. Um, right. So as I, I just get very, very concerned that we're going to be death by a committee because the other thing too is what, what makes this park any, should every park have a subcommittee? Should we, should we create a subcommittee? Like where, where does it stop? And I know Frank raised that earlier, or Sergio raised that earlier. Where, where do we stop with having a committee for everything? So oh, no, that's, that's apples and oranges. One generates a million dollars. One, the other parks don't generate money. It's an apples and oranges. But they're all parks. I, again, they're I all. I understand they're all parks, but we have 50 acres. We have half the land is unoccupied. That's just part of the study. You know Under, understood. Yeah, and again, we can, we can talk about all that substantive, you know, all the ideas that you have. And, and I, I know we have ideas too. I think the committee, the community has ideas. I just, I'm, I'm more talking from the, from the process standpoint. Uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's going to be a lot easier to work through the recommendations and suggestions and try to implement stuff if it's us um, as opposed to having another committee that's going to report to this committee that's going to you know like we're just adding another layer of 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 red tape and bureaucracy for i think no reason when we, when we Derek, have right here. Well, Derek, so so I just get a, yep I, i've listened to everyone talk right and this is what i have to offer um the reason why it's a need to, um, um, for people thinking about another committee is because we have a process right now where you can request uh, commissioners to come to committee meetings and they don't show up. The Good. reason why um, people feel like um, you, when you um, people taking a tour and they talking to the workers and the workers are sharing um, about how they feel. And then once again, here we go with this administration discrediting um, the the um, things that are shared with the council people, the people that are elected to represent the um, people in their voice. So every time we uh, present this stuff, it's met with some type of resistance. You know, I think that um, it was a clear point made when Sergio first started speaking, and he and he didn't know the name of the golf course. You know, um, and and I just I just feel like you, I'm listening here. COVID, 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 COVID. You know, COVID wasn't the reason why. Um, everything is, is in the um, situation that it is. And I think that um, when the community speaks, it has to have, we have to be receptive to what the community is saying. Um, you, you say a, a lot of people in the second and, and the lower wards don't know about golf and the golf program that's being mentioned um, um, took place years ago. And so if we are having a problem with the golf pro, I think that um, when we negotiate and we put the RFP out, um, language should be in the conversation about him 
being more um, 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 receptive to including the um, inner city and to um, being open to um, exposing um, different kids to it. That's where the conversation should be at and not try to just say, um, we're spending money here, you know, um, this money is going out and it's interfering. And, and it may be interfering because no one ever advocated for our, our kids to be a part of that course. So, you know, um, before we start changing stuff, look at what's really wrong. And what's really wrong is any, every time somebody um, um, brings up a point about how people feel, it's always questioned instead of us being heard and, and, and us trying to work through stuff. So that's what I would like to offer to this conversation. Mike, you're back. Uh, Wait, well, Dave, excuse me. Dave, back? do you want to respond to that or no? Yeah, I just want to clarify for the record, when this, when this committee was originally reaching out to meet with the two commissioners, they, like, they were meeting, the, the pretenses of this meeting were much different than what we're meeting about today, which is really the golf course. Originally, we were going to meet about how the budget, proposed budget cuts were going to impact summer programming and DGS services. And that was a conversation that I had with leadership about how it was a premature conversation. So to, I just want to make it clear, this wasn't the commissioners ignoring, like trying to hide from the golf course conversation. The, the two conversations are like apples and oranges. This is a totally Dave, different Dave, if I can respond to that. The, so commissioner, I just, the commissioner never even answered the four emails which were sent to him. If he had some confusion about what the topic was, he, he could have responded. Because and I spoke the very, with Dave, and made it Dave, clear that I this was a premature please. conversation and we had already agreed what the, what, what the original request was about. So, and I- Well, and the I, original I, request, the record request saying, can be read. Dave, more confusion Dave would you part. listen for just a second? The, re, the original request could be understood by reading the title of the resolution. And even if he didn't understand that, he could have called back. But he didn't. I mean, so it was like totally I'm talking about ago, though, just to get him to sit down. That's true, Dan. So I think it, the I think is, how do we get beyond that? Yeah, and, and Mike, I think, I think whether we've... Whether it should be a committee or a working group, I don't know. But it's got to be a, a, a group that has open, fluid communications with the commi both commissioners. It isn't just DGS. It's, uh, it's REC, too. It's, it's, it's got to be open, fluid communications so that when council members get questions they can feel that they're getting answers and not feel like they're in some kind of void that they're not being talked to. Kathy? I, I'm, I just want to say that your, your point has been made Mike and I think that Sergio is ha, is providing us with uh, you know how we can move forward here. I think the idea of us getting back together these two committees on a quarterly basis and getting an update on where we are. I also think it's reasonable to kind of request someone to kind of outline some of the uh, points that have been raised. Uh, that would be really helpful for us to refer back to. Um, but that idea of, of getting back together quarterly on this issue, I think, I think that's the answer here. And I think- uh, But, but the forward. problem with that is you've blown the whole summer. The whole summer is blown if we wait a quarter. In other words, in many respects, wait we're waiting a year. For, what do you mean, though, Mike? I, I, it's I a lot mean, of these a quarter things... is three months. Figure out July, August, September. Oh, oh, but a lot of these the big things do the big take time. These with things, nothing but promises. These things do well, so take you know, time to put in place. Yeah, yeah but the communications the don't. Open communication. Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend the resolution to make these two committees the Capitol Hills Working Group. Well, that's. A... Uh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. Can I vote? That's... Well, um, I don't know, Jack. What was the motion to uh, if, uh, in, instead of the committee is structured in your resolution, make the committee be uh, the two combined committees and what title, uh, Owusu, did you want to give it? The Capitol Hills Working Group. 
I'm okay. fine with that. I just feel that there should be like, I just feel there should be like a, like a, an architect involved, but I do agree with you, Uso, and I'm fine with the two committees meeting, but I do feel that there should be uh, some expertise in the, in the, in the operation, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, don't we have an engineer? We don't have we have a comment that we never went through? What's that? We have public comment that we never went through before we vote. Yeah, we should go through that. Can I give one point of information? Yes, Joe. Uh, a resident just texted me a Google map of the golf course, and I think will be very informative, especially for those people that have got to walk the course and are familiar with it. And the other thing that was mentioned to me is that, Sergio, you mentioned that uh, about making them a city employee. Well, to do that, I believe it should be a city resident. And this other person said to me, there's a golf pro that lives in the city of Albany, one of the best teachers around, and he would bring diversity, they say, because he teaches great lessons to kids and to women. That's it, thank you. Yes, uh, do we wanna do public comment, uh, Michelle or Danielle? Oh, there's Danielle. I am here. I was just pulling the public comment up so that I could have it ready. Um, just bear with me one second. Uh, the first public comment is from Barbara Villa, uh, who lives at Faith 5 Mayfair Drive in Slingerland. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. I am not a golfer. I have walked my well-trained dog at the golf course for many years. I pick up my dog's waist and keep her under voice control. The course is beautiful and provides people with a hilly, healthy, safe walking environment. I live in Slingerlands and would gladly pay an annual use fee as a non-resident to be able to continue to walk on the golf course. Although I am not a golfer, I think the golf course should be maintained in some form, perhaps as a nine hole golf course and the golf key should be set at a level that enables the city to operate it in a cost effective manner. My primary concern is that the course property not be sold to a private party. That would be a huge loss to a community. Again, that comment was received from Barbara Villa of Five Mayfair Drive, Slingerlands, New York. The next comment comes from uh, Charlene Schaefer, Five Sawyer Place. Albany, New York, golf course. I feel that a committee should carefully study the use of other recreational activities on the golf course property. A resident fee could also be charged similar to the town of Bethlehem to ensure that all dogs are licensed and have shots. About 60% of the dog walkers are not city residents. There would have to be rules and regulations to include cross-country skiing, shoeing, walking. Also, the Stevens Farm area could also be included in this plan. Possibly another pool or picnic areas down by the Normanskill. A mountain bike path could also be planned at Stevens Farms. The course is in great shape and it is too bad that Albany lost three weeks of golf fees and many of the golf leagues went elsewhere. The new prices are also a bit high. Again, that comment was from Charlene Schaefer. The next comment reads as follows. My wife, family, and friends have used Capitol Hills to walk, snowshoe, ski, bird watch, and dog walk for many years, usually five to six times a week from the day it closes for golf until the last day before it opens for golf in the spring. I was a golfer and caddy as a teen and played into middle age, but my family and friends used the course exclusively during the non-golf season. I mentioned my background in golf so the council understands my sympathies for golfers. I hope the mayor and council have gone to Capitol Hills to see the hundreds of people using it to walk, dog walk, and otherwise stay fit and safe during COVID. We thank the maintenance people when we see them and always pick up dog poop, ours and ones left by others. Hearing that the course might be losing money has led us wondering about its fate. I've listed some possible suggestions for the council to consider. Currently, walkers have to be off the course by 8 a.m. That eliminates 99% of the non-golfers given the time it takes to walk either 
the front or back nine as an interim while you weigh options. How about alternating golf start times for the front nine one week, followed by the back nine the next week? Walkers would then have time to stay ahead of golfers and be off each of the front or back by 10 a.m. Keep the old gar golf course mode and kept up. Mark trails through the woods. Currently, there are many unmarked trails throughout Capitol Hill. With minor golfing, well, I'm sorry, with minor marking and updating, these trails could be routes where walkers could stay out of the way of golfers. Harden the power line trail. It's already wide enough, but with some minor mowing and trimming, a vigorous hike with available side trails along the way. If it is determined that the golf, that the course is too expensive to, to keep open for golf, turn it into a spectacular urban park. There would be no need to maintain the green, spend money on chemicals, and no need to have a large staff keeping the course in shape for golf. Fairways could be kept mowed to keep vegetation from encroaching and no need to keep so much of the fairways maintained. There would be no need to employ the staff that are usually employed to keep up the course in golf shape. I can tell you how much, how people have commented that they pay for an annual permit to use the course. It could be a minimal amount for Albany residents, which is a substantial increase for non-residents such as myself. Please do not sell the land to a developer. I hope the council realizes that a one, what a one of a kind gem you have in the middle of a city. We run into people from out of town who are visiting friends and family. We hear the same thing over and over, that there is not a golf course anywhere like Capitol Hills for exercisers and dog walkers. Respectfully, that's from Alan Via of Slingerlands. Alana Klein submits the following. From, she's from 29 Glenwood Street, and her comments read as follows. Misters, chairpersons, and members of the committees, I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. I will keep this short as I do not anticipate any opposition to the resolution regarding Capitol Hills. I would simply ask that if you have any hesitation about passing this, that you consider the part of the pushback about reopening the course was that it was not the great revenue generator that some were claiming. I'm not going to bother with numbers, particularly because the course is now open, rendering that conversation essentially moot. However, there is so much unused land there and it deserves at least a conversation on what, if anything, can be done to improve the recreational opportunities there. While I fully believe the future of this land should include activities that can be enjoyed by residents cost-free, it is also an opportunity to increase revenue for our great city. Thank you for your time, Black Lives Matter. And that again was from Alana Klein. And that concludes the comments that I have. Uh, there were some other comments that came in that were not necessarily specific to this topic that were forwarded and shared with the other council members. Right, Mike. Well, if they aren't specific to this topic and they were shared, it's probably no necessity to read them now. So, so Jack, I guess my question is, um, the composition of the committee, uh, personally, I think we need a committee because if we're, if we're back to the same old thing, having to pester everybody to get them together again and waiting quarterly, we've just blown the whole rec season the biggest rec season the summer. Um, I personally like the idea of a committee, the composition of it. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, Dave, Dave, you have a question or suggestion? This is a comment, but I'll, I'll wait till Mike's done. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's my question for, for input. Uh, I think a committee is a good idea because that's a working committee. Uh, I don't, know whether it should necessarily have to have a licensed engineer, a licensed attorney. Uh, I don't know how many seats should be appointed by the council. Personally, I think all the seats should be by the council because this seems to be a council initiative to get information from the city administration. So I don't see the need for the mayor to appoint half of the committee seats on this committee. Um, so those are my thoughts. 
Let me just jump, just jump in real quick. So my yeah, motion, the, I don't know. Uh, are we going to vote on that? Because I got to, I mean, people. The thing is, if the issue is receiving information, forming another committee isn't going to get you any more information any faster or any. So that's why I say it doesn't make sense to create another committee because of receiving information and communicating is the issue. I don't see how a commu a, another committee uh, improves upon that. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to make these two committees, the Capitol Hills Working Group. Uh, can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you. Can we take a vote? No, I'd like well, to. Well, let's have a discussion on that. I mean, yeah. I, I am not necessarily opposed to that. I am opposed to saying we only meet quarterly because I think now is the season for the most active meeting. Well, I, know, uh, well, I made that clear. Can some of, some of uh, the rest of us sure. speak? Absolutely. I, I am comfortable with meeting quarterly on this. I mean, Jack, you mentioned, should we have an architect involved? I think absolutely, you know, as far as any other kind of planning proposal here in the city, RFPs go out for, you know, uh, input on how we might uh, do things differently. So landscape architects could be brought in on this. That's something that uh, Sergio's department could uh, address. And we've, we've done this before where council members have participated in uh, meetings on a regular basis. I mean, you think of our meetings that we've had with DGS Mike on recycling and so on in the landfill. And I think that's effective way to stay on top of what's being done in this situation. So I would, uh, Awusu, with your amendment, I would like to add that uh, we meet, council members meet, uh, this group meets on a quarterly basis with, with uh, DGS staff and, and also uh, recreation. Thank you. Uh, quarterly is fine, I may agree with Mike. I don't mind meeting the first two of every month or something, whatever, suggested, whatever you think. Well, Maybe to me, I think uh, I don't like the restriction of it has to be quarterly. I mean, I like the hey, idea that the can working we say minimally? group. Minimally? Can we say minimally? I, minimally? Uh, yeah, I guess if you say minimally quarterly, but I quite honestly would expect to have another conversation on this with both Rec and DGS in a month within uh, within a month maybe yeah I agree I want to say minimally quarterly but I wouldn't restrict it okay minimum quarterly. I'm I'm, so, I'm okay. sorry I, I just have to interject I'm a little confused as to what's going on I, there's a resolution on the on the table right now that has a construction already set up Mr. Anani's um, motion was to do a joint one but I'm a little confused because it's wasn't really as germane to this resolution it sounded like he was trying to create an ad hoc committee of the Common Council. Just a little confused as to where are we going on this. Okay, Awusu? Awusu? Yes, because, because uh, an ad hoc committee doesn't need all, the uh, ad hoc committee per the rules has different parameters as opposed to what this resolution is proposing. This resolution has a little difference on it, whereas an ad hoc committee of the Common Council has more flexibility and you can call it what you want, but it's an ad hoc committee of the Common Council. This resolution before us is an outside committee that composes of members of the Common Council, but members of the public. So it's, there's a difference, and that's why I'm a little confused. So I think he's talking about amending the resolution to uh, take out the committee that Jack was proposing to form. Make it a joint, a joint meeting moving forward now. Yeah. JR, could like the first resolve be, be resolved that this committee consists of the DGS and Parks Rec Committee and then eliminate the last? Yeah. So just, just to be clear, right, it doesn't have to be like an ad hoc committee, just that we want to codify these two committees to meet together to discuss the golf course. That's exactly what it sounds like. An ad hoc yeah. committee. It's an ad hoc committee then. If you're trying to do, if you're trying to do yeah. a joint committee of the Common Council, make The last thing Jack said. said. Okay, whatever Jack said. Jack? My, my question is. Yeah. Yes, Derek. So does that mean that there's no longer a Parks and Rec um, committee? Oh, no. We still have them, and they could intervene whenever they want, I think. 
Well, there's always, these are always, those are standing committees. This is just a, an ad hoc committee separate. It's kind of like our PEG access one, which is an ad hoc yeah. committee. Yeah. Yes. No problem. Can That's I basically it. For a minute? Would it, would it be, would it be easier to just say in the resolution that you're, you're looking to hold minimally, minimally a quarterly meeting just like the one we're doing today, the joint committee meetings? Basically. Well, but I think there's some advantage, and Awusa, I'd like your comment on this. I think there's some advantage to having what, something that considers itself a focus group on this issue of expanding the recreational opportunities of the golf course. And I like the word focus committee. I think Alfredo wants to, to talk. Alfredo, you fine with that? I think that's the way the, the language is, right, Alfredo? Alfredo? That's in me for the language. That's, that's, that's fine. Oh, sorry. I mean, my, my biggest concern with um, meeting quarterly is that Mike, Mike was, Mike, one, Mike's right. I think it, it, we lose a good chunk of time, but two, I think some of the things that we're talking about and some of the ideas that Sergio's talking about, we can start acting that now. I mean, we don't have to wait. I mean, I think we should have a meeting next month to see, you know, what progress has been made and what's needed. I mean, if we're looking for sponsorship, why would we wait to September to try to get sponsorship? Why wouldn't we start working now to see if we can get someone to sponsor each hall? Even if we only get $1,000 a hall. That's twelve thousand dollars, eighteen thousand right? dollars. Eighteen. <laughs> I don't know golf. Eighteen thousand yeah. dollars, addition to the, you know, and I think we can easily get each 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 hall to be sponsored. The tweets that was something that was done until two thousand twelve. That was way before Sergio came on. I mean, I know you know, BJS is taking a hit right now, but you know, Sergio's only been here two years. They stopped that three program in 2012 was based on what the person who spoke to us um, said. You know, selling those little plackets for the trees, they, that was about five to $10,000 based on what we were told on Saturday. You know, why don't we try to bring that back? That can be done now. I mean, we're going to be going to a very difficult financial situation. And I'm hoping we don't. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping Congress is going to bail us out. But if we can make money from this golf course, we should be doing it now. And we shouldn't wait to meet three months from now to try to figure that out. We should make it very clear. We're meeting right now. We spent an hour and a half meeting right now. We spoke about sponsorships. DGS said they want to see more sponsorship. We've all said we want to see more sponsorship. So why shouldn't we put that as a task item try to get done. We've talked about looking at space. We took a walk on Saturday. DGS can take a walk whenever they want. Look at what space, work with Commissioner Jones, look at what space he thinks that would be usable. You know, when talk about that next month, we can talk I'm fine about with monthly. I mean, Mike, I'm fine with monthly until like the summer and winter hours, you know what I mean? I, I, I mean, I've got nothing going on. <laughs> I just, the, the one thing I would caution from the staff side of things is we're already shorthanded. We're trying to manage a fiscal crisis among other things. So I just, I would just be, there's, I'm hopeful there's a, a fish, efficient use of our time where we can have these discussions. Um, but I just caution, like we don't want it to become a every other week type thing where like we just don't have enough time to focus solely on the golf course. Like it's up and running. We've made it, we've accommodated for walkers. Um, but again, we understand what you're trying to do by, by having a larger vision in the future. Um, but I just want to remind everyone that a lot of people are doing more than one job right now. Um, maybe we can ask the commissioners uh, what would be realistic uh, as far as us then regrouping with us. But in the meantime, what I was going to suggest is that we change the language we take out the last two um be it further resolved take those out and uh 
and then would they now therefore be it, be it resolved um, at minimum, let's say, at minimum a quarterly meeting of a focus committee that consists of council members, Department of General Services, and youth parks and recreation staff um, as the substitute language. And then take out anything that pertains to establishing a new separate committee. That's in the, currently in the resolution. Uh, if I may interject, uh, uh, being in government for so long, we know things take time. Uh, the, the, uh, there's a lot of great ideas being thrown around. We definitely have to run by legal. If sponsorship can be done, I don't know. Uh, those things take time. Uh, quarterly is the most reasonable uh, because now we have a plan and we can take things in action uh, and put a place in action for 2021. Uh, if we can't, if we do it right, in my opinion, we'll get everything done, have another meeting in a couple of months, update everybody on what's going on, and then start implementing everything by 2021. That's a very reasonable time to do. But to meet monthly, don't forget, DGS got a million other things going on. It's not coming in November, December, holidays. Um, monthly would be too premature. And I don't think we have enough uh, responses to go back to people and say, this is what we found out. So in my opinion, and I don't know, I'll leave it to Jonathan Jones, but it, it, Commissioner Jones, but in my opinion, quarterly is the best. Have another meeting just before the, the, the winter break so we know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and just we can keep in touch via email and then have another meeting at the beginning of the year to say this is what we're going to do for April with and so forth. Other than that, it will be too premature. I thank you for your time. Yeah, Sergio, I, I agree with you, but I think it's word over to Dan now for this year, so I do agree. Next meeting in September, I think, is reasonable. Well, What's that, Jack? Jack, I couldn't um, hear you. I think it's reasonable that September would be the next time because we've already lost this year for a meeting. We don't need to meet in July or August. So I think I do like the suggestion of, you know, quarterly. Well, quarter at, well then, then the word minimally quarterly. Yes, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, but that doesn't mean there can't be some other sharing of ideas between now and now and quarter. Right. right. But I thought Sergio had said at the beginning of winter. That's more than quarterly. But quarterly, yeah. To, Kathy, can can you go over the wording that you had proposed? Uh, let's see. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council shall create, a, I'm sorry, a focus committee that consists of council members, Department of General Services, and Youth Parks and Recreation staff. I don't think I have the correct wording there. Who will meet at minimum who will meet court at minimum who will meet at minimum quarterly so a focus committee that consists of council members department of general services staff department of general services youth parks and recreation staff who will meet um quarterly at, mi at minimum quarterly period and then you could take you would take out uh, the last, all the last, be it further resolved, um, because they they don't apply then. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, that's fine. I'm ready for a vote as long as it's Jr. thinks it's legal. Yeah, that's fine with me. All right. Jr. So I'd like to move it out of committee with a positive recommendation. 
with that amendment. With the amendments. With, with the amendment. I second it. Okay, Jack, um, which chair do you want to call to call the vote? Do you want to call the vote, Jack? You can call Mike since it's my Okay. Uh, so is there any other discussion on a Wusu uh, motion with Kathy's amendment? No, so, no. so I would am I ask. Deleting, am I deleting a portion also about the consisting of seven members? Yes. Um, that, uh, yes. Deleting that, yes. Am I deleting yes. also the common council member who represents ward in which Capitol Hills is located shall chair yes. the committee? Yeah. Okay. You're, you're deleting the last Basically, it's all these. Well, you basically all the resolves. Four or five be it resolves. There's, there's only one be it resolved. No, he needs an awesome mic for one year, right? Do you want to keep that for one year? Oh, uh, okay. We're about to sad. Oh, and, and we keep the last be it resolved. Yeah. Then for one year. For that me. the committee shall exist for one year. Yeah, that should stay. Okay. Hopefully, we can resolve it by then. And then keeping it consist of seven members? No. No, uh, no it doesn't have to be seven members, right? It's members of GS and Parks. Leaving it open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for legal purposes, you need to establish what a quorum would consist of. Um you need that. Or an ad hoc committee. Well, if it's an ad hoc committee, then the res I don't think the resolution is even necessary to even amend, I think. Um, I thought it was that the committee is the Gen General Service Committee and Rex. So it would be. So how many, com how many people are, because we share a lot of members. Oh. Oh, yeah. Parks and Rec. Youth, youth? What's the name of the committee? <laughs> so uh, Parks, the Rec, and Family Services. Services. There's only five, because there's three members that share both of the committee for park and general service. So we're talking about the name of, we've got Department of General Services and uh, staff from uh, okay. park, Parks, what is it, Park Rec, Youth, youth park, and Workforce park, Services. Parks, Rec, and Family Services. You think we would know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you check on that, JR, to get the correct name of that department, please? Well, I'm also a little confused because you're, since you're yeah. adding, you're adding the DGS <coughs> staff on there, are you adding them as voting members or what's the no, intention? No, there's no, it's a committee. Of, Recommend, of recommendations. Yeah, which I guess they would, they might vote on, on, on something. So I guess they are voting members. That's 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 where the confusion is. Yeah, right. that's the confusion. Well, you're creating an ad hoc committee, but then you're having DG, which shall consist of common council members and DGS staff. Yes, staff and parks. Oh yeah. For informational purposes. Well, for well, informational purposes. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the commissioner might want to send somebody else on a given day. Right. And that's okay. So it's for informational purposes that they're there. So there's actually seven me seven members that constitute both of these committees. Good. Seven members, but then you have to include DGS commissioner and Parks and Rec commissioner, so it's nine. It's a nine-member okay. committee. Need, why, okay. Do you need to have that number in there? Why can't we leave it more general? Well, I think he's saying for quorum purposes. Yeah, you need it for quorum purposes. JR, can you say DGS or Parks and Rec designee? me? Yeah, that's what I put in. I put in there, I put in common council member, DGS, and parks and rec staff or designee. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> up, so, uh, so up to 10 council members. We've got five council members on each committee. But we share council members, so yeah, there's only seven different, a collection, totally seven council members oh, okay. constitute both committees. Well, this, well, that's the, the composition of the council members is not really a concern because this shall this is gonna since it's only for a year this will ex, this will expire next year yes so so what so, is so what should so be? it'll be based on it'd be based on this this term's um composition so it'd be the seven members essentially yeah okay 
So seven members, D D G S. So you're seeing, so you're saying a nine, a nine member committee. Raphael, or John Raphael, it, <laughs> is it? Um, can't you just say council members who are members of the council's D G S committee and the Parks and Recreation committee? So then you don't have to get into the numbers. Yeah, but we know the number is a certain number. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, JR is doing that. I just want to thank you all for the informational discussion on the golf course. Yes, I, I think it was. I think it was very, very good. Uh, I know I got a little passionate in some of my discussion, but no offense intended. Right. Can I clarify one more thing? Just because I heard it in public comment a couple of times. There's no plan to sell the golf course. Right. It would require state law to sell the golf course. Yeah. State like fusion. I just want to make sure that's clear to everyone. There's no plan to sell the golf course. But we've heard a lot of questions and rumors. Understood. But oh, I appreciate you telling us that. Yeah, I just want to dispel any myths that. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, thank you, John Raphael. Yeah, thank you. So we're going to take a vote on this motion. Yep reflective of what JR has typed into the copy that's up on, on the screen. So all in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, JR, Michelle, or Danielle, if you could count the ayes. Come on, yep. Yeah. Everybody can raise their hand one more time for us. Okay. Uh, a call for a vote on the amendment and the favorable recommendation Aye. as as reflected on the screen now. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sir Nani. I didn't hear a Nani. Aye. Yes. Okay. He's eating his birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is that what you call it now? <laughs> I'm on record right now. All right, Mike, can I make a motion to adjourn tonight? Yes, I'll Aye. second it. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Uh, all right, thank you all. I'll thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here and taking time for this. Have a good holiday weekend, everybody. Oh.